All right, so we're gonna talk about how to make a uh, 24 inch sign on a 60 watt laser. It's not exactly that simple. So it's, it's 700 millimeters uh, wide by 500 millimeters tall. So we're gonna have to use the pass through slot. We're gonna have to cut the, um, the sign in a special way. So basically a continuous flow. So long story short, my wife made this logo right here. Um, it's for a client. So what I need to do is make a background so I can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna do a 30 by 30 inch uh, square. We're gonna take all this stuff and we're gonna put it to a new layer. And the reason I do that is just so I don't get it confused with the work that I'm, that I'm gonna be doing right now. So this is all separate stuff. So if we hide this, um, this layer, that's all that stuff that was already made so we don't mess it up. So now what we wanna do is we wanna put this logo, I mean this big big old rectangle, we wanna put that to the background and then we're gonna lock it. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna give us a white background so we can see the work that we're doing, right? So, so now this right here as delivered is 8.85 inches. So that's how my wife made it. So we need to scale it up to uh, 24 inches. And now it's uh, 24 inches by 24 inches. And then what we need to do now is we need to break it apart a little bit. So the, um, the background, we don't need that. And I'll show you why shortly. But what we can do now is since we have it selected, this eclipse, we can delete it. And don't forget, we have this rectangle locked. So we can drag on it and it doesn't move anything. So all we have left now is this. That's what it looks like right now. So what we want to do now is we want to we want to set it up so we can start making cuts. And to do that, we're going to get rid of the fill. And we're going to add a stroke to it, the whole thing. So now the whole thing has a stroke of one. And if you want to see what it looks like without the white background, it just looks like that. And that's going to be where the laser is going to cut. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to do something for scale. So we know it's 19 inches tall. So if we make it about 18 inches, it's going to give us plenty of room to play with. What we need to do now, what I'm working on now, is making a, something that we understand how much the laser is cutting. So, um, so the height, we want that to be 19 inches tall. So now we know that, that we could cut this, this logo. Um, so this is how big the laser is. So if we cut it about right here, um, we'll be able to put the sign in through the pass-through slot and it'll get everything. So let me show you what that means. So now that we're here, you hit the C on your, on your keyboard, which is cut, and then we're just gonna cut it right there, right there, using this square um, as a guide. So we know that it's gonna fit on there. And then we're gonna cut it right there and right there. Not 100% perfect, but I'll show you. So now we can get rid of this guide that we have. Uh, we can take this guy from here. Well, let's use A to see what got selected. So it cut about right there. So we're gonna hit A. We're gonna highlight to about where it goes to. Hit V, Alt, and drag. Same deal for this other piece, A. Select the pieces, V, use on the alt, and drag it over. Ungroup it, use V, delete, delete all that, take both these pieces, and bring them here. And then we wanna group these two together, so that's gonna group as that, and that's gonna group as that. So now we have our top half and our bottom half, and now we just line them up with our vertical align. And we can bring it closer. Hold on, I think the dog needs to go outside. So now that, now that we have these two pieces um, sliced in half so that we can fit it to the laser because it's physically, the sign that we're making is physically bigger than the bed size. So we cut it in half into manageable chunks. And then now we got to feed that to Lightburn to tell it what to do or to make the project. So to do that, we're just going to right click, collect for export, export it as an SVG, and then Pick it up in light burn. And I'm gonna show you most of that right now. So collect for export as a single asset. Export settings as an SVG. 
and then X. But actually, we're gonna re we're gonna give it a different name. So we're gonna call it Proverbs because that's what it says in there. P R O V E R B S. As an SVG, select the folder, go from there. So now that we have exported it, now we're gonna pick it up in Lightburn. All right, so here we are in Lightburn. Now we're gonna navigate to the folder, we're gonna grab it. Give me one second. All right, so we navigate to the folder. We're gonna grab it, it's called Proverbs. Drop it in there, bring it here. And now we have, uh, now we have it like this. Right? So what we want to do now is we want to um, ungroup everything and we want to do it in chunks. So that part's going to be grouped and that's going to be the first pass through and then, th and then this is going to be the second pass through. That, oops, group. And then we're going to move this over here. Oh, nuts, I forgot. All right, so before we group it all together, what we want to do is we want to individualize everything and make it red. Oh, and then something to note too, um, yesterday, the power supply on my laser died, and that was a cloud ray one. Uh, unfortunately, it was only three months old. It's ridiculous. But it's outside of the, when I went to Amazon, which is where I bought it from, it says it's not returnable, which it, even though on the website it says like six months, forget them. I'm just, I, I went to um, a place in Sacramento called Light Object, and they sold me a power supply, and this one goes up to 150 watts, but I just used it at a lower setting. so. Basically, uh, before it was like at 25 here, and now now it's at 18 or 40 percent, something like that. So my settings have changed. So if you, if you go from video to video and you notice that, that's the reason why is that I had to upgrade my power supply. Well, I had to replace it, and I figured I'd upgrade it. And if you're local in the 209 area, um, the, the closest place that I'm aware of is uh, called um, it's called Light Object, and it's in Sacramento. And it's, it's well worth it. They're only an hour from where I live. I live in Salida. And uh, it, if you need, if you're doing laser stuff and you live around here, I, I suggest you go there. Yeah, I'm, I don't get paid saying that or nothing. They're the only place that I know though. So just to FYI, and their prices are pretty cool. So what we want to do is we want to etch this so we know where everything goes because nothing's worse than trying to line things up on a wooden sign. Well, I can think of worse stuff, but that's up there. What I want to do now is I want to cut this outside line though. And now it's at 40 for the cutting. And same here, I want to cut that. And then we group these together. Uh, group, group. And so now, whenever we put in the 24 inch uh, piece of wood, we put it right here. It's going to cut that first half. And then we could either flip it around or Actually, I'll show you what I do. I'll show you my way. Because obviously it's not gonna fit in one go. So we're gonna send it. Oh, nuts. Hey Google, turn on the laser and the air compressor. Sure, turning two outlets on. All right, and it takes about five seconds. Uh, for it to work after I do that. Boom. All right, so what we did is we sent this first piece up uh, to the laser. It's gonna take about two minutes to cut. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna film the whole cutting. I guess I should. No, you're gonna have to see that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go here, go out to the laser, and I uh, get this first piece done. I don't even know if I have a 24 inch piece of wood, so um, I might have to cut one and then get to it, which you probably don't care about. But. BRB. All right, so I had to make a change. Uh, this is a 24 inch piece of wood, and to make that work, I made the sign 23 and a half inches. So uh, this is a pass through slot, and this is my wood. And uh, you, you could either use magnets like I have here, or, or you can use something to hold the wood up. But magnets are usually the easiest. So there's a little trick you can do with the magnets, and that is um, these little circle ones, but 
So you can offset them so they look like that. And then you kind of use it like a clamp to hold the wood down. It works really well. Um, as you can see, I go like that and it holds it down kind of like a picture frame. And then like, here it is right here. Bam. All right, so as you can tell, that's the first cut, and we did a majority of the cut that first cut. So, what we have to do now is we have to line up the laser to the cuts that are existing to finish it up to get our whole 24 inch piece. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this guy. So what we're gonna do now is we, we flipped it upside down and now we're sending it to the laser. All right, so it's very important during this step that you use your eye protection, like no joke. This is like 40 bucks. And if you go blind doing this shit, you're gonna be sitting there thinking the whole time, I wish I would've just spent the 40 bucks. It's important. Uh, so long story short, we're gonna file, we're gonna enter. So we're gonna bring this piece right here. And then what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna line that up to where this is. And to do that, it's a little bit of back and forth, right here. So to make sure this guy stays locked in, right? Then we're gonna go this little button right here this is gonna set your laser to that point right there. That's weird, it didn't show it. Okay. Usually it shows like a little dot, but it's fine. So what we're doing now is we're setting that outside to this outside right here. So it corresponds. And then to check it, I'm gonna pulse it again. Mm -hmm. you hit your pulse over here. And then you look to see where it went. And it hit it right there. So that's not very lined up. It's barely missing it. So we're gonna move it up a little bit. And then hit pulse again. And now it hit it right on the outside. It's very, very close. So we're gonna move it just a hair up. And that should be good. Now, we wanna go to the other side. Use this and hit this guy right there. Remember, be careful you don't move that piece because it's exactly how it's going to cut. And we go over here and we check it. And to check its exact location, you hit the pulse button. Bam. Now it lined up a little bit on the inside. So to fix that, we're going to rotate just a little bit. And then I'm going to pulse it. I'm going to pulse it. Bam. And hit it right there. So now we got that side lined up perfectly. We have that side lined up pretty well, but we just adjusted it. So we're gonna go back over here one more time. And we're gonna test it. And then we're gonna hit pulse. And it looks like you hit it. All right. So. So something important to know as well is whenever I pulse that laser, I close my right eye. I'm right-handed, I prefer my right side. So let's say worst case scenario is I go blind, I still got my right eye. So I close my right eye and I, and I observe through the safety glass. But I, I'm not recommending you do this period. So I'm not with that word, like waiving disclosure or disclosure or waiving liability. If you do this, you do this on your own. I, I, I'm not saying to do it. And that's it. So then uh, now all we gotta do is turn the fans back on. Um, again, the trick of this, I don't know if I was able to show it too well, but uh, I have these these magnets. Amazon said that they're 95 pounds each, that, that they hold 95 pounds. I think it's more like 40 at the most, 20. But uh, I put them over like a Z shape so that I can hold down the wood like that. So it just pulls everything in place a little better. 
Now we'll just do one more over here, just to be safe. But uh, other than that, we're good to go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut the ring and in order to do that, we're going to turn everything on here black. Well, because black is what I use to cut it with. Again, my settings are uh, 12 mil millimeters a second at 40% power, but um, that's just what I use. So yours might be different. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this in there to cut this whole piece, and then we're going to do the same thing again. So what we're going to do now is uh, file thinner frame, and we're going to make sure that it's going to fit. Now this one's going to be a snug fit. All right, so remember we're using the magnets here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put that there, and we're going to take another one. There. All right, since, since we know the circle is going to cut like that, another safe spot to put the magnet is right here. But we're loading it up pretty good on the left, on the right side. But it's just because it's so uneven. Yeah, this might not work. I have a Yeah, All right. So this is if you ever were wondering how this happens on warp lift, here's your answer. Magnets. Alright, so basically we're doing the same thing again. You can take a look. The magnets did their job, held that down while it cut out, and everything cut pretty well. Again, this is a pretty cool little trick. I mean, it only costs 10 bucks. They're like a dollar a magnet, so it's well worth it. All the little pieces, don't throw them away till you're done. 100% painted and, and ready to put it on because there might be a piece that you need that you're gonna find in that pile. Okay. What I'm going to do now is set it up too, right here, to the left corner. And that way, we know where we're going to be at. Again, don't forget your, uh, your safety glasses. Don't be an idiot. Alright, so you got this, uh, it's, it looks pretty lined up to me, pretty close. So um, again, I'm going to close my right eye and look with my left, even with the safety glasses on. And, and you can even just turn your head right there. So that's where the dot ended up being. So then we're going to move it up a little bit and give it another pulse. And then also something to remember, I've done this before, is you see this, where, this is where the beam goes. I've actually had my hand in there when I hit the pulse and it burned me. It burned me. So keep that in mind. All right, there it is. Damn, lined up perfect. All right, so we're good to go. So uh, we're gonna do the same thing again. Close this down. And the, the, the reason that I'm closing it now for, for the videos is because there's so much smoke. It really bothers me. I don't think that stuff's healthy to smell. That's why we've been leaving it close to get as much of that smoke out as we can. But uh, now we're gonna cut it. So that's pretty much how you do it. That's how you take, that's how you make a 24 inch sign when your maximum height is only 19 inches. 